Hi, this is Paul from Test Data Services, and this video is about a load test that we're going to run as part of a performance tuning cycle, following on from a first cycle of testing, setting up some monitoring, and this is really a video summary of running a repeatable high volume test. So this test will probably uh, run with around 6,000, maybe 7,000 virtual users. We're gonna, actually going to ramp it up toward 10,000, but I expect we'll start to have issues before we get to 10,000. Um, and because it takes a little while to ramp up and run, I'm going to start it now and then I'm going to explain it just so that while it's ramping up, I can go through the explanation. So I've got a whole lot of load generators ready to go here. I fire them off with a PowerShell for AWS. Uh, so I'm going to just show you how I do it myself. I've got, I need 52 in this case. So I'm going to just go copy and then paste. So this will uh, set up 52 load generators. If I go into um, instances and I search for TDS demo, TDS demo, Let's have a look here. If I refresh now, look at that. Lots of 29. Um, if I refresh, 35. And while that's happening, you can see here, we're actually updating uh, all these new instances that are just launching right now with different IP addresses that have got a new domain name assigned to them, uh, which means that our load test is able to pick these up. So we've got 50. 52 now, 50, 50 out of 52, and then if we go to the next page. So we've got all our load generators up and um, running. They may not be quite ready yet. It says initializing, for example. If I go here and uh, go to uh, view the, um, the, there's a, where is it? There's a way you can look at the console. Can't see that here. We have to wait until it doesn't say initializing really though. I would like to show you what that looks like. Oh, see, we go instant screenshot. Ah, that's great. Once we get this, we know we're good to go. So, Let's go now to the scenario, load generators, and let's select them all and hit connect. The other thing we have to be careful of is that it does take a little while for the DNS to update and ripple through, but that's looking good. They're all connected. That's great. So if they're all connected, we can hit start. And they will all run. Now, while they're ramping up, I'll pay close attention when we're getting close to 6,000 users. So in the meantime, I'll just show you what we've got here. So we've got a test that's going to run with uh, 10,101 users, ramping up 20 users every second. We're spread over 52 load generators. So that's, um, that's basically a user every two or three seconds for each load generator. We can see we're rapidly going up this, this uh, ramp at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, iteration pacing, unlike the first cycle, where the purpose was to run a thousand concurrent sessions with no think time so that we could actually drive the whole application to 1000 concurrent sessions. Um, and it's all based, basically driven by Lambda, and Lambda has a limit on AWS of a thousand concurrent Lambdas. So I wanted to not exceed that, so that's why I did a thousand users full speed. But this time I want to actually run a test that's suitable for rerunning over and over again uh, in a way that's repeatable. So even if we get a response time spike or some degradation, I don't want the workload to suddenly drop off because our response times slow down a bit. If they slow down crazy, then it's going to drop off. So the pacing for this script here, which is the authorized script, and most of the users are authorized users, is 10 to 20 seconds. So it means from the start of one iteration to the start of the next, 
will be a period anything from 10 to 20 seconds it will average 15 seconds what this script will do is it will log in as a pre-existing user and it will then do uh, between one and nine uh, refreshes of the token as if it's a multi a multi-day interaction and doing a refresh after it's expired just that it won't have expired uh, so that's what that first script does uh, I've got 48 I think of, of those uh, uses yeah 48 of them and the other one is the sign up script so the sign up script has a pacing of two to four seconds so an average of three uh, and it basically randomly grabs a, an identity that hasn't been uh, retrieved before for a subscription and it then does the sign up process for the first time and it saves a value in one of the TDS calls, test data service calls, so that we then use that for these authorizations. So we then log in with only users that have gone through the sign up process. So let's have a look and see where we're at. So, so far, um, now the way the, when I'm running a test, I would normally configure this, the screen to show me clock time and whole scenario. But when I'm expecting a sudden degradation or some problems, I'd flip it back to 60 seconds or 180 seconds, three minutes of view. So we can see now that we've got three and a half thousand users running and we've got a few of these uh, data points. Let's have a look at these data points. So uh, we've got here, if I sort them, scroll down to the bottom we've got some lambda ones then we've got some dynamo db ones and we've got some api gateway ones um, in the lambda ones that are showing at the moment if i highlight these two i'm showing what the the maximum concurrency of all of the lambdas that are running uh, is compared with just the open id connect call lambdas Go back to the previous video and you'll see uh, how this is done. I'll show you one quick view of the script so you can have a quick glance, but we're going to have to um, watch carefully soon because we're, we're probably going to reach the capacity of the system and we want to be watching it when, when that happens. So this script um, goes through, the, like I said, the other video, but it makes a whole lot of requests with queries for the metrics that we want. In this case, we're looking for a metric name of duration from AWS Lambda for a particular function, in this case, OpenID Connect token. Um, and then we get, we get the average time, minimum time, and maximum time based on the average minimum maximum data returned uh, for the current or the previous minute. And then we log it with a data point. We then, at the end of the script, sum all of those into something called combined total average concurrency and we log that as well. So that's what uh, this pink line is. So where are we at? We're at so what I'm going to do now, we're at 5600. 5, so I'm going to let it sit there for a little while at 5600 uh, because I want it to be settled I don't want to smash headlong into a, a situation where we suddenly go over the capacity. Because we're running at a concurrency of 200 lambdas, or just over 200 lambdas, if we get a slight slowdown in response time for any of the calls, given that we're doing 4,000, nearly 400, or 4,400 per second, our concurrency will skyrocket. And the moment it goes over 1,000, we'll get... Um, blocked basically will be throttled and the code in my solution in test data services doesn't retry after a throttle it just gives up uh, because i don't want it to take too long uh, I, i'm expecting just to, to give an error if i can't do it and it's not something i would normally do anyway okay so our concurrency's gone up to 270 let's have a look at we'll change the view now to um to the last minute all graphs we can see the response time here for the authorized call that is the authorized call yep there's two authorized calls one for the sign up and one for um, the um, the login after we've signed up we can see we're starting to go a little bit up and down here between 
150 milliseconds and 170 milliseconds. So we're sort of teetering right on the edge of a slowdown. Haven't had any significant numbers of errors yet, uh, but I'll let it just run for a little bit longer. Now, while we're waiting for that though, I'll show you a few more of these um, uh, metrics that we're grabbing direct from AWS CloudWatch while the test is running. We've got, if I sort them again, uh, we've got uh, for Lambda, duration and concurrency for a whole lot of records. So to save a user ID, uh, we've got the, um, the minimum time, uh, the maximum uh, time, and the average. And the average is about, um, this is in milliseconds, about 60 milliseconds. So that's good. Uh, we could go and have a look at push identity, uh, the average for push identity for or concurrency for push identity at the moment is 20. So we're only doing 20 concurrent ones. So if pretty well the whole time we've got 20 of these in, in flight at the same time, but the actual response times for those calls, uh, I'll show that one. Blue. Oh, it's, oh, there it is. Uh, so we're talking, you know, uh, 40 something milliseconds. So that's good. Let's go and have a look at how our system is going. It's going good. I'm going to just resume um, maybe 100 users at a time. See if I hit the 100. Oh, oh 200. Um, it's hard when you're ramping up fast to just do little tiny incremental increases. So we've gone from 5,500 to 5,780. So it's about 5% increase in workload. And let's just see if our transaction response times start to rise from that. It takes a little while to adjust. And maybe it has. Look at that. This line here is uh, get unique random identity. We had a bit of a, a blip there where it, it nearly doubled in response time for a short time. And it's come back. So that's good to note. Um, the other thing we can be doing, oh, actually I'll just leave it there for now. I want, so the data we get back from AWS Lambda, uh, sorry, AWS CloudWatch, which includes Lambda and DynamoDB calls, which is the ones I'm most interested in, um, is every minute, unfortunately. It'd be nice if we could get it more than that, but we can't. So that's why I'm gradually ramping up as I'm approaching the point where I'm start where I'm expecting to see problems, uh, because if I uh, ramp up too aggressively and the whole system goes from going fine to to overwhelmed and in disastrous state in less than a minute, I won't see which metrics have changed. Uh, if I did substantial instrumentation uh, on the application side, I might have a better view, but the Problem is that um, well, I, you won't normally be able to do that. You could do a bit of it, but you won't be able to do a, a lot. The idea is you're supposed to use some testing to figure out where to look, at least what calls to look at. So I'm now ramping up a bit more again. Pause. So at 5840. We'll give it 20 or 30 seconds. We've done 1.6 million transactions. We're doing 4,500 transactions per second at the moment. We've been going for 10 minutes. And I just want to wait for the next bit of data here, and then I'll step up again to the next one. So far, so good, though. When this has got data in this spot here, I will resume again. There we go. Let's try and stop it on the 6,000. Oh, 6,060. Now, within 10 seconds, we'll see if we get a bit of a spike here. So a little bit with this one, 
which is the, if I remember rightly, the get unique random identity. So that call randomly gets one of the two and a half million identities and then checks to see if it's retrieved already for this subscription key. So every time we do a, a series of tests, we might generate new subscription keys so that we can um, we can basically start off with new data. I haven't done that though since cycle one. So I've actually got the same data. So there's a whole lot of identities already uh, set up and logged in ready for reauthorizing. Okay, let's let's give it another bit of a burst. We'll see if we're going for 6,200 this time. Let's see how close I can get to that. Sixty-two twenty. Now the benefit of doing this slow now uh, will come out when we're doing an analysis. It'll give us much better visibility into what's going on. Ideally, when we're trying to do some performance engineering and root cause analysis of where something's gone wrong, uh, we don't want to be going along and then just have a crash. We want to bring it to the point where it's starting to to groan and and have issues. So look at this. Okay, so we're right at the threshold. This may come back or it may start to just degrade further and further. So we're, we're going up now. So something's having problems. What I might do is I might back off a whole lot of these users. Just reduce the load a little bit, see if I can get it to come back. So we're down to 6,100. Get ready to drop off another few. Uh, I might not need to. So this is good because what we've done is we've, we've managed to go from under 200 milliseconds to sustained performance of about 500 milliseconds. So we've worse than doubled our response times and it's starting to come back again. So we're right at that threshold, which is really good. And we'll start to see, so our concurrency now, our maximum concurrency is 460. So it doesn't take much to push us up over. Now, the good thing is that this is like a, a multi-minute excursion from great response times, but we're still, we still haven't returned back to, to what we were before. Just to show you, configure, let's look at the last 10 minutes, apply all graphs. So we're here now. Uh, this will give us some good clues as to where our first performance bottleneck is, especially if we stay here for a while. Uh, but now our, our concurrency though, is now heading up 600. And we've got this one popping up as well. What's this one? Um, so uh, push identity is starting to go up. So is that push identity concurrency? That's duration. So that's suddenly taking quite a lot longer, but that's effectively causing our, our total concurrency to go up. So we're sitting at 600. I'm gonna let it run here for a minute or two, and then I'll stop the test. Um, so then we should have enough data. So we started slowing down. We were definitely slow by 1549. We're now at 1541. So we've got two whole minutes of data and let's just see if we can get a third. Then I'll push stop. Then we'll do some analysis. And then um, the, the next video will actually dig into what instrumentation we might choose to do or what, what we're going to do next. But the good thing is that if we have this as a nice clean test run, it, it means that we, we know how to get to this point uh, quickly uh, next time around. So our... Our response times have slowed a little bit, but our concurrency has gone down, which is a which is a good thing. So normally, when we run a lot of tests, 
in a BAU type situation, we don't sit there and watch it. We just let them run and we look at the results afterwards. But this is an example where we're trying to dig in and find out what's the first bottleneck for performance. And to do that, we want to actually really have our hands on the wheel uh, while we're driving this test. I think that we might we might have given it enough. 30, so one minute, two minutes, three minutes, pretty well four minutes. So I might push the stop button, wait to the 17 minute mark, stop. Okay, we're going to stop it now. Oh, I should have remembered to show you. It is nice because we've got some monitoring. I might just force this one to run another iteration or two so we still get some metrics because we've got one of our virtual users is actually collecting metrics we don't want during our stop uh, to not get any more metrics so until these other five users have stopped it's nice for us to keep on collecting all right so we're collating so there's 52 load generators here so you can see there's lots it's pretty quick though save um, results analyze what I might do just takes it out of here I should don't really need to take it let it be so I've set up a template already with the key graphs that I'm gonna look at so I don't have to take too long to build those for you while we're watching the, the data come through so when we first get data uh, after a load test in load runner especially a large one um, you just get summary and it's not it's not all real but it's good enough for us to save and let's just hit the let's save this one how many users did we get 6200 and 20 save all right we're at 100 percent yes i want to look at the whole results that's looking good so let's look at what we've got here we've got average response time uh, is good and flat for most of the test until 1548 uh, actually I've got a graph I think that shows um, transaction response time along with yes there it is along with transactions per second so total number of transactions per second ramped up we got to this level and then we just stepped up a couple of times and then when we were at here um, we started to see slowdown in response time and then that actually caused a slight back off as well in in the transaction rate and we, that was sustained so that's it didn't affect all transactions so it affected um, authorize uh, both authorizers and push identity so push identity if you go back to the open id connect video is the one where you um, push an identity so that the next authorized will be able to authorize that identity and all the other ones are okay let's have a look now at the key transactions per second <coughs> very close to 2000 of uh, refreshes per second uh, we were doing uh, about 350 uh, authorizers per second uh, actually 50 authorized there was two different authorizers but and the other one's down here somewhere so that's our transactions uh, if we look at open id connect calls themselves we were doing about 28 2900 per second which is pretty good so now we're up to the lambda uh, concurrency figures so for the lambda concurrency this graph here is the the token concurrency average so this is the one that gets um, is used when we do a refresh token and notice that it rose up because we're doing a lot of refreshes per second what 2000 or so but it didn't degrade whereas this one here which is the authorized concurrency 
went from a concurrency of 50 up to a concurrency of 235 when we started to hit a limit. And this one uh, is the push identity. It went from a concurrency of 20 to a concurrency of 100. It went up by a factor of 5. And this one is, um, oh, that's minimum. We don't care about minimum. Average, oh, so that's the authorized one. So we had the concurrency of two of our lambda calls rose dramatically, but when that happened, the actual transactions per second hardly changed. It was pretty well flat at the time. So something's going on inside those calls, and that's what we want to get to the bottom of. The next thing we can look at is DynamoDB get latency. So the gets were typically two to three milliseconds the whole way through the test. So I am very confident that fetching records from DynamoDB was nothing to do with our issue. Um, the next one is puts, DynamoDB puts. We have a slight change here, but really nothing. And we're averaging four milliseconds for puts. I cannot imagine for the life of me that there's anything to do with DynamoDB gets or puts that's causing an issue. I was actually expecting originally that I might have a hot petition uh, because of the way I've designed uh, the, the code, but it doesn't look like it in this case. Yeah, so the Lambda identity, the Lambda performance here has really um, increased dramatically, as has the time to push an identity. So we've gone up by a factor of four, really, there. Uh, compared to the other, it's only really maybe a factor of three. So we really need to understand why um, why that is, compared with all the others that, that haven't gone up. So those two have gone up a lot, but the other transactions have stayed flat. So I need to focus on the difference between the ones that have degraded and the ones that haven't degraded, and that will give me a window. Uh, the API gateway response times, that slowed down obviously you know, when the Lambda call slowed down. So the Lambda latency is really the focus. So we can see here that uh, response times degraded significantly, and um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go away and do some analysis, maybe set up another test, do some instrumentation, so I can figure out what's going on at the time of this degradation, what, what causes it, uh, and then hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. Basically, I'll be looking at the code to see the difference between this code here that's giving good response times versus the other code that's slowed down, and then the similarities between the two different functions that slowed down, but they slowed down at different rates. From that, I should be able to work out uh, what the difference is. So I hope you found this an interesting uh, presentation on an, a video summary of doing a repeatable test that shows how we can uh, do some performance engineering to get to the bottom of a performance issue uh, and uh, hopefully improve it. Have a great day.